I'm Laurie Cardoza Moore, and this is Focus on Israel. Are you aware of the mysterious and profound link between the restoration of Israel and the restoration of the church? On our program today, you'll learn more about this mystery and how it is evolving today. The late world-renowned Bible teacher, Derek Prince, brought this principle to light in his book, The Destiny of Israel and the Church. Derek states that the central theme of biblical prophecy, as it is being unfolded in our time, revolves around the land and the people of Israel. God is carrying out His predetermined plan to regather the Jewish people from their worldwide dispersion and restore them to their ancient homeland. Hello, and thank you for joining me today on Focus on Israel. Like most Americans, I began to ask a lot of questions about what happened to our country following 9-11. As I read and talked to experts, the issues of radical Islam and the attacks on America and Israel became extremely personal to me. In response, I founded Proclaiming Justice to the Nations, a nonprofit organization dedicated to educating and sharing the message of Christian biblical responsibility to the people and land of Israel against the rise of a new anti-Semitism. This program presents information you'll not see in the mainstream media. With your help, we can reach Christians around the world with our message to stand against the growing threat of anti-Semitism and anti-Israel propaganda. That is why it is so important that at this time, we must turn our focus on Israel. So what is God doing in this critical hour of human history? Stated simply, He is restoring His people both Israel and the church. Psalms 102, 13 speaks of the time in which we live. Thou, O Lord, wilt arise and have compassion on Zion, for it is time to be gracious to her, for the appointed time has come. And as Yeshua shared with his disciples in Luke 21 about the days before his return, he said when the fig tree budded, we would know that summer was at hand. We know that Israel was grafted back into her land over 70 years ago, and she has indeed flourished and budded. Surely the time of restoration has come. Not only is God restoring both Israel and the church, He is restoring them in a very parallel fashion, for there is a mysterious but profound link between them. Some Christians have erroneously believed they could progress without her. But history paints an entirely different picture as we look back to the last century. The historical facts prove an amazing connection between Israel and the church. For every time Israel gained ground, a simultaneous wave of restoration was released over the community of believers worldwide. What is restoration? The process of restoration involves putting things back into their right place and right condition. We see the progressive stages of this process listed clearly by the disciple Peter in Acts 3, verses 19 through 21. Repent, therefore, and return, that your sins may be wiped away, in order that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that He may send Yeshua, appointed for you. For He must remain in heaven until the time for the final restoration of all things, as God promised long ago through His holy prophets. The process begins with repentance and is followed by seasons of refreshing, then restoration, and finally, His return. We see from this scripture that restoration is so very important because it must take place before our Savior can return. God in His sovereignty has initiated this process with His two peoples in the earth. Bible scholar and teacher Derek Prince was one of only a handful of men who understood this revelation in his time. 
His Bible teachings still reach over half the world and have been translated into 60 languages. His daily radio program was broadcast to half the population of the world in various languages. He strongly opposed replacement theology, and his book, The Destiny of Israel and the Church, clearly establishes that the church has not replaced Israel and that the covenant that God made with the nation of Israel still stands today. Prince also believed that the creation of the state of Israel was the fulfillment of biblical prophecy. From the pulpit of a simple church, here is Derek Prince. Times are one of the main themes of Scripture. The Scripture has a great deal to say about times. And we are going to be dealing with a specific time in God's prophetic program. But just to look back for a moment, in the days of King David, when his kingdom was being established, it was said of the men of the tribe of Issachar that they had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. And if we don't have understanding of the times as God reveals them to us, we probably will not know what to do. And then in the New Testament, after Jesus had risen from the dead and was about to take his leave of his disciples, they said to him, will you at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which God has put in his own authority. Again, we see that times and seasons are under the sovereign control of God. But this evening, I want to speak about another time which is referred to in Scripture in Acts chapter 3, verses, tw verses 19 and following. These are words of the Apostle Peter that he spoke to an assembled crowd of Jewish people in Jerusalem shortly after the day of Pentecost. So I'm going to read from Acts 3, verses 19 through 21. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Notice again, we have times, times of refreshing. And then it continues, that he may send Jesus, the Messiah, who was before appointed for you, whom heaven must receive until the times of restoration of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. Again, notice, times of restoration of all things. So Peter outlines very simply God's program for closing this age. I believe that's something that is of real practical concern for all of us. But it must be initiated by a response by the people of God. So Peter says, repent, turn back to God. And then he says, God will set in motion the process that will bring the Messiah back again. And he says, repent and be converted or turn back to God that your sins may be blotted out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. So repentance leads to refreshing. This is a principle that always works for God's people. If we are in need of times of refreshing, it will be set in motion by times of repentance. To try and seek God's refreshing without repentance is a waste of effort. And then Peter goes on and in this period he says that God may send back Jesus the Messiah who was before appointed for you. And then he says whom heaven must receive until the times of restoration of all things. In other words Jesus will not come back until there is a period which is called times of restoration of all things. But my theme 
this evening is that there is a double process of restoration taking place. And God's restoration always begins with his own people. They are the center of God's purpose on earth. And as I understand it according to the scripture, God has two peoples on earth to whom he has a special relationship. The first, historically, is Israel. The second is the church of Jesus Christ, the assembly, the ecclesia, the kehillah. This month marks the 70th anniversary of the historic declaration of the State of Israel. God's sovereign hand can be seen all over this land. Included in the celebrations is the opening of the American Embassy right here in Jerusalem. In honor of this celebration, PJTN is offering a special 70th anniversary package, which includes a captivating new book and an award-winning DVD. Israel Rising is a unique visual story of Israel's miraculous journey from unforgiving desert to thriving nation. Thousands of years ago, the prophet Ezekiel foretold a future time in which the arid land of Israel would come alive for its people. Now this breathtaking book documents the fulfillment of this vision as rarely seen photographs from the 1880s to the 1940s are juxtaposed with recent photos of the same locations. This book will inspire and captivate you as it illuminates Israel's foretold awakening in a new and unforgettable way. In addition, you'll receive the award-winning documentary, Israel Indivisible, The Case for the Ancient Homeland. This inspiring film examines the many political twists and turns that make Israel the world's most controversial nation. From Abraham and the Promise to the issues facing the Jewish state today, the film examines the historical, archaeological, legal, and biblical foundations for the modern state of Israel. This is a limited time offer for these two remarkable resources for just a one-time gift of $70 today. Your generous donation will help ensure that PJTN stays on the front lines and in the headlines of all the important issues facing Israel and our Jewish brethren. So please go to PJTN.org today. From studying history, it's very clear that what starts with the Jews never ends only with the Jews we must strongly stand against any anti-Semitic trends. For if not stopped, they'll cause harm to all of us, and we'll witness the downfall of our Judeo-Christian Western culture. Today, many people say there's no longer a need for a Jewish state, that Jews around the world no longer need a place of refuge. But anyone who has heard recent statistics about the worldwide rise in anti-Semitism would never make such a claim. The reality is that neo-Nazi groups and Nazi sympathizers are increasing around the world. Surveys show that over one billion people in the world harbor anti-Semitic attitudes. Close to 50% believe that Jews have too much power in the business world, and two-thirds of the world's population has never heard of the Holocaust, or believe the historic accounts of it are inaccurate. Don't let yourself be manipulated by evil people with a wicked agenda. When the self-serving villains are in control, good people from all religions suffer. Muslims, Christians, and all people of conscience should stand proudly and show respect for a country that gives so much to the world in so many ways. Do your part, do your research, and do what you can to make a difference because what happens in Israel does affect us all. This is not just a Jewish or just an Israeli problem. This is a problem for all humanity, for each and every one of us who believe in freedom and human rights. Learn more about what you can do at pjtn.org. In Matthew 17, Yeshua took Peter, James, and John up the mountain while he was transfigured before them with Moses and Elijah appearing. Afterwards, the disciples questioned Yeshua regarding why the scribes taught that Elijah must come first. And Yeshua answered them, Elijah is coming and will restore all things. As Yeshua elaborated, he explained about the ministry of John the Baptist. We see in Luke 1.17, when John's birth was announced to his father, the priest Zacharias 
It was explained to him by the angel Gabriel that John would be a forerunner, anointed in the spirit and power of Elijah. Gabriel said John would be anointed to make ready a people, prepared for the Lord, and that he would restore the hearts of many back to God. Almost 2,000 years ago, because of their rebellion, Israel was dispersed among the nations, and during that time, they suffered greatly at the hands of those nations, just as Joel and others had prophesied. He also prophesied that the vine, the church, would dry up. The record of history reveals this prophecy was fulfilled as during the same time period, the church was in what came to be known as the Dark Ages, a time of great dryness. They too were affected by invading armies of locusts devouring through deception and rebellion that entered the early church through anti-Semitism. The locusts of false teachers and heresy stripped the church of its sound doctrine and former glory, leaving it barren and desolate. But we see in Joel chapter 2 that the Lord has pity on his people and promised to send grain, new wine, and oil to satisfy them in full, that they would never again be a reproach among the nations. He tells both the land and its people to rejoice because he is sending rain, the early and latter rain as before. He promises to make up to them, to restore what all the locusts have eaten and devoured. He goes on to say that he would pour out his spirit on all mankind and that our sons and daughters would prophesy and our old men would dream dreams and our young men would have visions. Truly, we are living in the days that Joel foresaw as we are watching the ongoing restoration of both Israel and the church. Let's hear more now from the late, great Derek Prince. God has two peoples, Israel and the church. And restoration applies primarily, but not exclusively, to Israel and to the church. And restoration is the time when God puts those two peoples back in their right place. Now, for Israel, restoration is primarily, but not exclusively, geographical and political. Because God has only one right place for Israel, which is the land which is now once again called the land of Israel. And putting Israel back, restoring Israel, requires putting the Jews back in their land. God gave that land to Abraham and to his descendants by an everlasting covenant <coughs> 4,000 years ago. And God has never changed. He's never reneged on that covenant. And one of the most significant facts about contemporary history is that God is fulfilling his covenant commitment to Abraham. Men may have forgotten the covenant, men may have ignored it, men may have set it aside, but God is faithful to his covenant. So restoration for Israel primarily or initially is putting them back where they belong. And this, as I say, has essentially been taking place throughout the present 20th century. So that's a picture of Israel's restoration, very briefly. But now I want to apply the same principles to the church, the true church. And I want to suggest something which may shock some of you. Basically, I believe the church has been out of its spiritual inheritance in Christ for just about the same length of time as Israel have been out of their geographical inheritance. And one point that I want to develop is there's a very close parallel between the restoration of Israel and the restoration of the church. Actually, Israel, if you might say it, is in the natural. The church is in the spiritual. So it's easier to see things in the natural. To see them in the spiritual, you have to have spiritual discernment or insight. But basically, <clears throat> I want to suggest to you that the restoration of the church to its spiritual inheritance in Christ has proceeded parallel, step by step, 
with the restoration of Israel to their inheritance. Viewed this way, history has a meaning. And the developments that have taken place this century all fit in to God's eternal plan. If you were to choose a date for the restoration of the church, and I mean this is somewhat arbitrary, I believe the restoration of the church can only take place through the supernatural presence and power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the agent of restoration. So if you just want to choose a date, you could take January the 1st, 1900. Because at that time, in a Bible school in Kansas, a young woman in the school went to the heads of the school and said, please pray for me I want to receive the Holy Spirit the same way they received it in the book of Acts. Now the heads of the Bible school didn't believe in that, but to accommodate her they prayed for her and she received it. She began to speak in tongues. <laughs> and that in a sense was a breakthrough. Then in 1904 there was what has been called the Azusa Street outpouring in Los Angeles and then it proceeded parallel. So. We're looking at a parallel process of restoration of Israel on the one hand, the church on the other. 4,000 years ago, God made a covenant with Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and their descendants for the land. And in 1897, that ancient promise came to life as modern Zionism was birthed in Switzerland through the leadership of Theodor Herzl. The hearts of Jews began to be stirred with an unexplainable desire to return to their God-given covenant land. Paralleling the historic pilgrimage of the Jews to their homeland around the turn of the century was a whole new beginning for the church. In the United States in Kansas in 1900, a girl in Bible school asked her teachers to pray for her that she would receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And to the surprise of her teachers, she did. It spread, and shortly after, in Los Angeles in 1904, the famous Azusa Street Revival ignited where many thousands were touched by the power, miracles, and glory of God. We see that as Jews began to return to their promised covenant land in fulfillment of Scripture, a great blessing for Gentile believers was released. Then, in 1948, history was made when Israel formally became a nation again after almost 2,000 years. Never before had such a thing happened to any other country in the world. As a result of Israel's major achievement, another wave of restoration and blessing was released over the Gentile believers of the body of Christ. During the very same time period in the United States, the ministry of evangelist Billy Graham multiplied and spread internationally with many hundreds of thousands hearing the gospel for the first time. Again, we see historical proof that as Israel reclaimed more of her covenant inheritance, believers were empowered to reclaim more of their spiritual inheritance. Yet another major event for Israel was the recovering of their beloved city of Jerusalem in 1967. During the Six-Day War in June of that year, and against impossible odds, Israel regained possession of her capital, Jerusalem. At the same time, a wave of God's Spirit was poured out on the church in what came to be called the Jesus Movement. The moving and gifts of the Holy Spirit, according to 1 Corinthians 12, increased and were restored back to at least a portion of the modern-day church. In addition, the ministry gifts of Ephesians 4 also began to be restored to the body of Christ as the fivefold teachers, prophets, and apostles began to be recognized alongside pastors and evangelists, thus greatly strengthening the body of Messiah. Another very significant sign of restoration is the current Jewish Roots movement where Gentile believers are rediscovering and embracing their heritage. This has been growing at an amazing pace as believers worldwide are desiring to know more about their fathers of the faith. Indeed, we are seeing the fulfillment of prophecy through Malachi in chapter 4. Behold, I am going to send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and terrible day of the Lord. 
and he will restore the hearts of the fathers to their children and the hearts of the children to their fathers. While the scripture speaks of the spirit of Elijah that will restore relationships between children and their fathers, perhaps Malachi also foresaw our day when Gentile children would also be restored to their fathers, their Jewish fathers. As we can see, history confirms that the bond between Israel and the church is a real and powerful one. The challenging and wondrous process of restoration will continue to unfold simultaneously between the two as the scriptures continue to be fulfilled. Ultimately, his plan will culminate as the two peoples become one. The one new man of Ephesians 2 will become a living reality so that the desire of the Lord will finally be met and he will have for himself a people and he will be their God. Well, that's our show for today. And I want to thank you for watching. The time to stand up is now. One person can make a difference. Get involved and support pro-Israel organizations such as PJTN. Visit our website. Sign up to receive free action alerts and order our films to share with others. Please encourage your family and friends to tune in and watch Focus on Israel. God bless you. And thank you for all you do on behalf of our Jewish brethren and all Israel. We'll see you next time on Focus on Israel. To support this program, send your tax-deductible gift to Proclaiming Justice to the Nations, P.O. Box 682711, Franklin, Tennessee, 37068. You can also support PJTN online. Visit PJTN.org or call 1-877-873-9020. Anti-Semitism has reached epic proportions, and Israel is now surrounded by nations who seek its destruction. For Israel to lose just one battle would mean losing everything. As Christians, it is our biblical responsibility to stand with our Jewish brethren and Israel. PJTN needs your help to reach more Christians with this urgent message. Please visit our website to become a member today and order our award-winning documentaries you must decide that you won't be silent. Sign up now at pjtn.org. God bless you and thank you for your support and prayers.